Yo, Elliot, I'm 32 years old. I've been walking the inspired path for the better part of my 20s. All I loved was going on stage. I moved to the US from Italy, learned the language, started with classical theater, and eventually discovered stand up. I worked during the day to get by and went on stage at night, barely making ends meet. The pandemic made me unable to go on stage. I'm in love with a girl and would like to be able to provide her with a better life. She's studying for her master's and the idea of struggling artist is not cute anymore in your thirties. <laughs> You're right. So I straight up quit. I'm learning to code and I'm trying to revitalize a land in Italy to make it more profitable. I'm doing everything I gotta do to be the man in my girl's life and to be a good earner for my future family but I can't help but to think that I let my inner child down. Stand up is the thing I got to the closest to mastering. But at the same time, I realized that it's not a lifestyle I want anymore, even if I succeed. The other, the other thing is I'm doing the other, on the other hand, sorry, on the other hand, the things I'm doing now are safer choices and better for my mental health. I even love doing them, but I'm just a beginner at them and I'm not a kid anymore. I'm starting late and can't shake off the idea that I'll never be great at them the way I would have been uh, great making people laugh from the stage. Do you have any advice for people like me who feel they've dedicated years to something, sacrificed a lot for it, and then suddenly they're starting all over? Uh, thank you for all you do. I'm inspired by your intelligence and grit. Thanks, Stefano. Uh, so, Here's the thing, brother. I've said it many times and it relates to your situation. Life happens in cycles, man. Life happens in seasons. And there's a season for everything, man. Better part of my 20s, I was playing football and I thought I was going to be a professional football player. And I put all my eggs in that basket and I made all these videotapes and sent them out to all these different teams. And I was really trying to like get in at different places. I was putting a lot of eggs in that basket. It never really panned out for me. But that was because the season was over for me. That season was over. And when I was in my 20s, I had to make I had to make peace with the fact that, OK, I'm not going to be a professional football player. I thought I could. I was good enough. I was fast enough. I was strong enough. I had the attitude. I would smash the shit out of people. But that season was over. There's a time for seasons to be over. And I, I like that you use this term because I want to attack it. You say, I can't help but think I let my inner child down. People who speak about talking to your inner child, honoring your inner child, things about the inner child need to slap their inner child. Inner child is done. There's no inner child. When you grow up, like you said, in your 30s, it's not cute to be struggling anymore in your 30s. It's because you're no longer a child. So you got to forget the whole childish thing. Letting your inner child down is okay when you're an adult, right? Just like letting my children down. I let my children down a lot of times, right? There are things they want. And I'm like, no, because I'm an adult and that's childish. And with your childish mind, you don't understand that I, you can't have that. You shouldn't have that. I don't want you to do that. So I can let them down. You're being a grown up now and you're having to tell your inner child, hey, it's time to grow up, buddy, right? I don't care what Disney movies tell you about the inner child and how everybody needs to get in touch with their inner child and that it, there's something cute about that. There's nothing cute about a grown man diddling and doddling with his inner baby. Do not fuck with your inner child. Inner child needs to die. I know people don't like to hear that, but inner child, your inner child needs to get slapped. He needs to go to his bedroom and, and go to bed without dinner. Fuck the inner child. I'm sorry to have to say it that way, but I think there's too much emphasis on inner child. And that's why men are not growing up. We're staying effeminate well into our 30s and our 40s, acting, behaving, thinking like little children, still holding on to effeminate baby dreams, right? You, on the other hand, though, have had some success. You had great success in your 20s playing with your inner child, right? You're In your 20s, you're still kind of like a child. I say you don't become an adult until 24, right? So you're still doing that a little bit through your 30s. It's great. It was fun. It's awesome. You did it. Be grateful for it. Grateful that you had that experience. But as the world turns and as the pandemic happens and as you turn into your 30s and as you want to take a woman into your life, you begin to realize that that baby stuff got to stop and you're there with it and it's OK. And I'm happy that you're thinking that way. There's no turning back. Right. You say stand up is the closest thing that I ever got to mastery. That's great. 
you're it's great that you had the opportunity to 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 have that mastery but now and trust me you're not too late you say oh it's too late for me to to do these new things in my life right it's not too late bro i'm 42 i'm i got 10 years on you and i'm just starting some of the things that you're starting right i never think it's too late man i try I, I try my best. Now, there are certain things that is too late, meaning like I no longer want to do that. I no longer have the capacity to do that. But it's never too late to learn how to do new things. Never too late to learn how to do, do new things or to uh, in, embark in a new endeavor. Like I'm trying to homestead right now. Most of the people who get into homestead and get they start out that way. A lot of them anyway. I'm 42 years old. I don't know nothing about raising cattle and chicken and shit like that. Right. But I'm going to learn. I'm going to figure it out because it's not too late. But even though I see certain people, like, you know, I told you I'm a fan of Joel Salatin, right? He's been doing it since he was six years old. He was selling eggs. If I compare myself to Joel Salatin, I'm going to beat myself up and think that it's too late. He was six years old. I'm there there 46, right? 42. Can't judge myself. And I invite you not to judge yourself there either if you're going to start new things. And you're doing the right thing by being a big boy. If you want to take a woman into your life, you got to make money. You got to be able to have a land or a home or a house. You got to be able to provide and protect if you want to have children, right? Your inner child dies when you have your own children. You want to have your own children? You can't be a child. Children shouldn't be having children, right? Man childs shouldn't be having real childs, right? I think your new goals and endeavors of being a husband, being a father, being a family man, raising the land, right? You say you got some land in Italy, you're trying to revitalize and make profitable, all these things. That's your new season. That's your new stand-up. That's your new uh, path for mastery. Let it be that and let the old stuff go. Let the old childish stuff go, man. There's a lot of things that we have to, if you read the book, Iron John, this is amazing. This is amazing. Read the book, Iron John, go to the chapter on road, the road of ashes. He says that every man at some point looks behind him and sees the road of ashes. The road of ashes are all those things that burnt out in his life that once was a roaring flame, right? He says, if, you, if a man looks back at his road of ashes, he'll realize that all those things that got him to where he is today had to die along the way. That version of you, that version of you, that version of you, all of them that you had high hopes for that burnt out eventually nourish the soil for the next step. So what you do in your life moving forward may incorporate what you learn from that previous step, right? You getting good at stand-up comedy means that you might be a very good salesman because you're charismatic in your speaking. And so when you make this land in, in Italy profitable by farming it or growing things on it or building things on it, and it's time for you to get you know, customers or business partners, you having come from a stand-up background, know how to talk to people, know how to entertain people, know how to be charismatic, right? So the road of ashes is a road, what, what, when, when they, you ever heard the term slash and burn? That means you cut down all the trees so that you could turn them into ashes because what do the ashes do? They create, they put more nitrogen in the soil, if I'm correct. They make the soil darker and more rich. So that burnt up tree lost its life, but now the ground is fertile for what's next. And it's the same thing for you, right? That burnt, that burnt itself out. Stand up, burnt itself out. And you even say that it burnt itself out and you're happy to move on with your next life, but you're, you're hesitant because it's new. And you can't let the newness of something uh, uh, stop you or slow you down from moving in that direction. Noon, there's another one from Brian Tracy. And I had to explain this to my daughter the other day. She's just starting to play soccer, right? And she's, she's, not, she's new to soccer, but a lot of the other kids have been playing for a long time, right? So it's brand new to her. And so at first, she was like kind of complaining. She's like, oh, you know, all the other kids are better than me. I don't know how to do this. I'm getting frustrated. And then I explained to her, I said, look, you are starting where every single one of those people started. In fact, you're starting where everybody who chooses to make a difference in their life, chooses to do something new in their life, chooses to take action in their life begins. Everybody begins at the back of the line. 
Everybody that's on the front of the line was once at the back of the line. You got to remember that with everything in life. Everybody who's at the front of the line started at the back of the line. Everybody who's on top of the pile started at the bottom of the pile. You got to be, you got to set our egos aside enough to say and be humble enough to realize that I'm just starting where everybody started and it's okay to start something new. I will be at the back of the classroom. I'll be at the back of the line. Like again, like when I keep using myself as an example as homesteading. I don't know anything about homesteading. I don't know a damn thing about homesteading, but you know where I'm starting? At the back of the line. What did everybody do at the back of the line? Ask questions, read books, study, try stuff out and mess it up and then try again, right? And that's where you're going to be with this new, this new path in your life. So you say, do I have any advice for people like me who've dedicated years to something, sacrificed a lot for it, and then suddenly it's starting over? Get used to it. That's my advice. Get used to it because it's just going to keep happening. It's just going to keep happening. Now, I don't want to curse your relationship. I'm not just using, I'm just bringing up an example that's a common example. You're going to take now your time, your life, your energy, and you're going to dedicate it to this woman, right? I don't know this woman. You know this woman. You're in love with this woman. So just like you were in love with stand-up, you're in love with this woman. I'm in love with this woman, and I'm going to invest in this woman. And you can invest in this woman. You could even make children with this woman. You could give this woman a good life, but at any time, she could die. She could divorce you. She could flip her lid and turn into a crazy woman. She could slip and fall and break both legs, and now you have to push her around. You see what I'm saying? The whole thing is that, that with life, dedicating yourself and sacrificing yourself for something does not guarantee. In fact, the guarantee is that it will be lost. Everything in this world is ephemeral, man. Everything is ephemeral. Everything is dust. This is one of the lessons that Christ gives us. He says, don't store up your treasures here. Don't store up your treasures here. Why? Because the moths can eat it and mold will get it and it will decay. It will rust. It will turn to dust. Every relationship you have, every job you have, every house you have, every car you have, every dollar you make is going to turn to dust. When you start to recognize that everything is fleeting, we stop being attached and we can move on and live life in a natural way, which is step by step, season by season, keep it going. Don't be attached. The world has taught us to be attached, right? The world has taught us that we get our safety from, from and our comfort from familiarity, right? They call it normalcy bias. Things will always stay the same. Things will always be normal. Things will always work out for me. Things will always be this way. Anybody who thinks that way is setting themselves up for a lot of pain in life. When you recognize both good and bad, that the phrase, this too shall pass, is legit, you, will, you live your life like a free man. So I say, dedicate your life to this woman and to your family and to the new phase. But remember, this too shall pass. Look at me, bro. I give everything. It's, it, I think about this sometimes. And my parents, I'm blessed because my parents were a good example because this is how my father and my mother live. I, I don't act. I know some guys who have like lots of money in the bank and they invest lots of money and they they're saving it for another day. And you know, they're, 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 they're just stacking, bro. Elliot Hulse does not stack anything. I have no stack, right? Whatever I have in the bank that's saving is just an emergency fund. I'm not investing out there. Right. I learned that from my father because my father lived his life and I lived my life to do everything I can this day with all I got and that's it. What do I have? What resources are available to me? What do I need to take care of today? Not tomorrow, not trying to save for the future. Just like that story. You watch that. There's another one from Jesus. Here's a story about this guy who he's, he, he's living on his land and it's blessed. He's got a lot of crops and they were very fruitful, right? He's got a lot of, a lot of grain. He's doing great. He's like, wow, man, I busted my, and this is a good guy. I think the story, like Jesus tries to relate the fact that this guy did the right thing. He was living his life. He was doing the right thing. Uh, and, and as a result, he was blessed with all this abundance. The guy then says, well, what am I going to do with all this? I'm going to save it up. I'm going to save it up in a silo. I'm going to save this for later. 
I'm going to stack this for my legacy, right? I'm going to put my trust in all this extra grain that is going to save me when a day comes that I'm going to need it, right? And so he put his trust in things of this world. As the story goes, Jesus says he don't know that tomorrow will be his last day. And so this guy who put all his eggs in this one basket with no consideration for his own mortality. And I think that's a part of the problem in our world today is that we don't take into consideration our own mortality. You're going to die. I'm going to die. You're the woman you love is going to die. Everybody's going to die. Mortality is knocking at our door from the time we were born. When we start to take that into consideration, we stop being so attached to the things of our life and of our legacy and our the seasons in our life let things go let life pass let it just like sand fall between your your fingers man have fun do the best you can enjoy the ride consider you're gonna die but don't hold on to anything too tight bro and i think that's all you really need to know I hope that helps, bro. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.